up you guys? It's Sarah. How you doing? Welcome back to my channel. If you are returning, if you are new here, hello. My name is Sarah. I review books and TV shows and movies and theater and all of that fun stuff. So if that sounds interesting to you, click that big red subscribe button because I make new videos every Thursday and I would love for you to come hang out with me. And if you're not new but you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, I would really appreciate it if you took just one second to click down there and click that subscribe button and click the thumbs up button if you enjoy this video. Today we are going to be talking about these Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. If you haven't heard of these Violent Delights, it's essentially a spin-off of Romeo and Juliet, but it takes place in the 20s in Shanghai, and it's post Romeo and Juliet love affair. So instead of dying, Romeo and Juliet survived, they just broke up, and they betrayed each other, and then they went their separate ways, and the gangs continued to rival. So the story picks up a few years after Romeo and Juliet have broken up, and the gangs have continued to rival, and there is this plague essentially like this disease that's breaking out in the city and there's also this monster breaking out in the city and so people are getting attacked and everyone is at risk essentially and so the story follows Romeo and Juliet even though technically in the story it's not Romeo and Juliet it's Roma and Giulietti but I'm Sometimes I just slip into saying Romeo and Juliet because it's easier. But they end up having to work together because they have this plague going around, like a plague on your houses type of thing, play on that, uh, but a legit one, and they have to go work together to try to solve the situation and figure out what's going on so that they can save their people. And if that sounds interesting to you, you can go check out these violent delights before you watch the next part of this video because I am going to jump into spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled, you're going to want to hop out now. Bye, people who don't want to be spoiled. Come back after you've read the book. Bye. Okay, can you tell I dressed as Juliet for this video? Can you tell? Does it come across? I've got my bling on, I've got my red on. The only thing I don't have is my nails are blue, not red. So that's unfortunate. But I thought I would play the part today because I had so much fun with this book. I really liked Julietti. I'm gonna call her Juliet. I'm just going to. So if it's pronounced Julietti, I'm sorry. I'll probably eventually call Roma Romeo on accident. Sorry. So I really enjoyed this book. I have several things that I want to talk about. I'm gonna dive into all of it, but first I'm gonna talk about characters. So Julietti, Juliet, I liked her a lot. She was ruthless and I loved it. I was here for it. She knew exactly what she was doing all the time. She had her weapons hidden everywhere, which I thought was pretty sick. Like someone would come up to her, boom, dagger, pistol. Like she had it all and it was great. And I also loved how the culture of the gang, it felt so real. It felt so much like you see a white shirt, you are killing them. You see a red shirt, you're killing them. Like the gang war is real and it's there and it just felt very very true and I loved the setting of Shanghai. It was a beautiful story. It was a beautiful setting. It was so different and that's one of the things that I just loved about it is it was different. You don't ever see like a Romeo and Juliet in Shanghai. It was awesome. Let's talk about Roma. So Roma I wish had a little bit stronger of a personality. Romeo is supposed to be a lover boy right? And I think that Roma captured that, but I would have liked to have seen more. I would have liked to see what Roma strives for. What gets Roma out of bed in the morning? For Juliet, it was very obvious. She wants to prove herself every single day. She wants to be loyal to her gang. She wants to fight for her gang. She wants to protect her people. Like, she's all in. She's training to be the leader of her gang. She's got it going on. Roma, on the other hand, is a little more passive. We don't see as much from Roma. We know that his father is not great and he's trying to prove himself, but honestly, I felt like we were told that a lot more than we were shown that, and I really would have liked to have seen Roma, like, striving for his father's joy or praise or whatever he's striving for. It felt a little more like we were being told, well, you know, no one really knows if Roma's gonna be the heir, and maybe that's gonna come in in the sequel. But even his friends, Marshall and Benedict, have this dialogue where one of them is like, yeah, I'm not sure Roma's gonna make it or something. And the guy takes it as he's saying to the heir, and that's not what he's saying, but it's there. So I hope that we do something with that because it felt like we were building that up for something and then we never really got around to it. So I'm hoping we go somewhere with that. Roma also has a sister in the book. I don't remember Romeo actually having a sister, but it's been a while since I've read Romeo and Juliet. She was very much a plot device. She served a purpose because Roma wouldn't have been motivated to help um, find the cure and kill the monster if his sister hadn't gotten infected. So 
that was good. I liked that. I liked Marshall and Benedict and the friends. That was good. In this version, Juliette's nurse is dead. So we have these two cousins of Juliet, uh, Rosalind and Kathleen, and one of them is posing as, I think it's Kathleen, like she's not actually Kathleen. She's like Kathleen's sister and Kathleen actually died. And I'm really hoping that comes into play because again, that was another thing that was just kind of stuck in there to show and build the world that they're living in and the gang culture. And then it was never addressed. So I hope that we get to talk about that in the next book. And then overall for the characters, I thought that there would be a little bit more forbidden romance and pining between Roma and Giulietti. It was very like they don't trust each other, they're going to build this alliance, and then they're going to like figure everything out. They're going to save their people, they're going to kill a monster, they're going to save people from the play, and they're going to go their separate ways. Which would make sense. And I did anticipate this, but what I didn't anticipate was I just thought there would be a little bit more like she walked by him and he caught her perfume. That's like my classic example. I always use this as a showing, not telling, and a pining example. But she walked by him, he caught a whiff of her perfume and like resisted the urge to move closer. They had this one like kiss and it was like they still didn't trust each other and so the kiss obviously ended and then they immediately cooled off. Like, we had this pining building in the beginning where he would touch her and she would be like, why am I feeling this? I should be over him. That was good. But then it never, like, it never flipped to be, like, her actively wanting him, if that makes sense. It was very reactionary because Roma was a little bit more touchy-feely, like, he'll hold her against him and things like that, and then she'll be like, let go of me. And she definitely had more restraint than he did, but I was missing the actual descriptions of the pining. I would have liked Giulietti to be like, you know, I had memories when, Ju when Romeo appears on the balcony, I would have liked Giulietti to be like, you know, uh, the memories are painful of him here on this balcony sneaking into my room every night. Like, it made me wonder what it would be like to feel his hands on me again. Like, I missed that! Especially because it's Romeo and Juliet. So in my mind, I just totally thought it was going to be a little bit more of like the pining classic romance than it actually was. It's not really a complaint, it's more of just like, I was expecting this and I got something else. And again, maybe this will come more in in the sequel, but in the sequel, it's going to be a lot of rebuilding the relationship again because, again, Giulietti has sacrificed and she has made it so that Roma is going to hate her. She dropped the bomb about revealing his mom's location, things like that. I'm so glad that came into play because for a second, I thought we were just going to ignore it. And I'm really glad that came back. And I'm glad that we addressed the killing on Juliet's house and her, like, all of her servants died. I thought it was a bit of a comp out though, if I'm being honest, because it was so casually and quickly resolved. Rome was just like, oh yeah, I never told you because I wanted to protect you, but my dad wanted me to kill you, and so that was our exchange. And Juliet was like, oh, he sacrificed for me. I wish there was a little bit more to that, a little bit more like Romo played more of an active part in it, not just like the martyr, if that makes sense. But yeah, I mean, I enjoyed the book. I feel like I'm complaining a lot, but I did really enjoy it. So some positive things are the plot is very good. It's a lot of build up to a quick, pretty quick resolution and climax, but it's very well done. And I did enjoy the characters as much as I'm probably making it sound like I didn't. I love the setting. The storytelling was very good. Like no complaints there. Everything was built up very well, very structurally sound. At the end of the book, we end on sort of this cliffhanger that we are releasing everything, which is safe to assume that there's another plague and another monster coming. I swear to you, I liked this book, but I'm gonna complain again. I thought, I thought that maybe we would do something different in the sequel, but it sounds like it's just kind of a part two. I thought that the sequel would maybe be a little bit more introspective with the gangs, figuring out how to find peace in the gangs, not going out and battling another plague and another monster. I'm sure that we will find peace in the gangs and figure that out, 
but I'm interested to see what happens there. And then I'm also interested to see if this is going to follow the tragedy, the true tragedy of Romeo and Juliet, right? Are we going to have them both die in the end and that's what ends up causing the gangs to stop fighting? Or are they gonna kind of be happily ever after and resolve the gangs? What is this building up to? I don't know, but I'll tell you what, if Roma and Juliet die because of the monster or like the plague, I'm gonna be a little pissed because the whole point is that they can't live without the other and the reason they feel like they can't be together is because of their families. It's not like it's not related to an external thing. I am smart enough to understand that this plague like with the insects is a reflection of the gangs but it's also a real plot thing a real I don't know what the word is not it's not a character but it's like a plot point it's a plot device it's a it's an occurring event in the story and I don't want that to be what causes them to die I want it to be this sounds terrible but I want it to be at the hands of their gangs or at the hands of each other in true Romeo and Juliet fashion. So I don't know, I'm excited for the next book. I am excited to share my thoughts about the next book. I don't think I'll get around to reading it for quite some time because I do have a long TBR list. Um, another thing that I hope that we address is Juliet has this whole insecurity about being like this American girl and she has this split identity between Shanghai and America and she's known as the girl that wears around her American dresses and like her bling and she's a flapper girl and I hope we address that because I would really love to see some self versus self identity action. And one last thing that I'll say is the whole title of These Violent Delights also led me to believe that this was going to be a little bit more pining, a little bit more steamy, a little bit more romance. And don't get me wrong, I wasn't necessarily looking for a romance book in this. Like it was obviously going to be sort of a fantastical spin on the classic tale and I was here for it. I wasn't looking for a cutesy rom-com romance. That's not what I thought it was. But I did just think, I was built up in my head that it was going to be a little bit more like the <laughs> these violent delights type of thing and it wasn't it's a great title but i wish the story had maybe reflected that just like a smidge more these violent delights it feels like these violent delights is what roma and juliet should have been labeled like in the part of the story that we didn't see back when they were 14 when they were together like that's what i was anticipating that's what these violent delights sparks in my mind if you agree with me, tell me in the comments down below and tell me what you thought of these Violent Delights as a whole. I would love to hear from you. If you want to follow me over on social media, on Instagram, I am at the underscore writing corner. And if you want to follow me on either Twitter or TikTok, it is at Sarah M. Caroline and that's Sarah with an H. Don't forget to subscribe because I make new videos every Thursday. Like I said, I would love for you to come hang out with me. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and share this video with a friend if you think that they would enjoy it. I hope you have a fantastic day and a fantastic week. I will talk to you soon. Bye!